Talk to me about the day you lost your baby girl. She was murdered. She was beaten to death by my ex-boyfriend. My ex-boyfriend, he killed her. Like, everything in her stomach, her liver, her pancreas, everything was busted over. Bronx man is under arrest tonight, charged in the death of his girlfriend's young daughter. The 22-month-old baby died from what the medical examiner describes as blunt impact injuries to the torso. Friends and neighbors are stunned. That's where police responded to a 911 call from LaShawn early Saturday morning. When they got there, they found Sanaa unconscious. Authorities telling Brittany her daughter received fatal blows to her torso, had lacerations on her liver, spleen, pancreas, and part of her small intestine. Green now faces murder charges, something Chris finds hard to believe, saying even though he was not Sanaa's biological father, he treated her like his own. Do you forgive him? No. What's good? My name is Chris Dallas. This is Trapping Anonymous. Welcome back. Welcome back. Everybody that's been supporting the movement and keeping us moving. It has been just a wonderful, wonderful time um, getting people's story out to the forefront and bringing those topics that we don't usually get to shed a lot of light on and talk about in our communities and things that plague our communities, but we get an opportunity to really get to it and change some lives and you know, this work has just been, um, it's been wonderful for me. It's been really gratifying and I feel like we're doing the Lord's work here. So we're just gonna continue doing that and um, bringing you the stories that you love. Do remember that the stories that you hear do not necessarily reflect real life. They're here to entertain, educate, or just keep your little homie off the streets. My name is Chris Dallas, Trapped Anonymous. Yo, if you want some merch, we got the merch too, man. We got, we got a lot of things going on, man. Keep sharing, keep liking, keep commenting um, on those Apple podcasts, make sure you you rate us and um, you download and just anything you could do to just keep um, sharing our story. We, we really appreciate that. My name is Chris Styles. Let's get it. How are you today? Hey, I'm great. I'm good. I like to jump right into my interviews. Right. Talk to me about the day you lost your baby girl. Um, the day I lost her, um, that was the day like my whole life changed like permanently. Like, um, you know, she was murdered. She was beaten to death by my ex-boyfriend. My ex-boyfriend, he killed her, like, everything in her stomach, her liver, her pancreas, everything was busted open, so. Why did he have her that day? Why did he have her that day? So, when, as, like, when we met, she was about four, three to four months. So when we met, you know, he took that role on, like, being her father, not right then and there, but like, you know, my friends, I have a best friend, um, Venetia, and um, my other best friend at the time, they grilled him, I remember that, and they asked him all the questions, he answered everything right, you know, so as we went on, he took that role of being, you know, my daughter's father, because her father was in the picture, but, you know, not maybe as much as he should have been, so. He lived with me at the time, so he took on the role. He would babysit her and things like that. So that was the reason why, he, you know, she was with him that night because it wasn't like it was a first time thing. This was regular. He would watch her while I go to school. He would meet me at my cousin Aisha's house, sit there with her for hours, wait for me, and I would go pick him up or I'd pick her up or whatever the case may be. So it wasn't a regular thing. He was with her because that was, that was. I mean, it right. was a regular That's thing, what it was. right? So. But, you know, fast forward, the, that night we were, my mom was, she did bouncing. She did bouncing at Club Envy. She worked with DJ, DJ Envy, all of that. Yeah, so. This month? Yes. Okay. So she, she was a bouncer back then, and mm -hmm. she was trying to get, like, um, a security, a little small security team in a spot. Like, you know, the little low-key Jamaican spots, mm -hmm. Jerome and the Bronx or whatever the case may be. So... She was trying to get the team in, in the building or whatever, so she was like, let's go out, let's go out, I'm going to take you and your friends out. So that's how he ended up with her. Okay, so you, you ask him to watch her, which is a regular occurrence. Yes. What happens next? Before you drop her off, did you sense anything? Was there a gut feeling? Or just was this like any other night? No, it was just like any other night he came. You know, he... Um, Actually, what I remember is that night, 
He came, my mother called him in the room and said, oh, could you watch, you know, Nani while we go out? He came out, he said yes. Mm. Okay, I'm like, okay, because I didn't want to ask him. How old was she at the time? She was going to be two, so it was like 22 months. 22 months, yeah. very young. Very young. Like, um, you, you, you asked him to see your baby girl one more time before you left? Yes. What made you say that? Because uh, before, the, that was the second time I had to go back up. But the first time, um, my friends, we were all leaving. He helped us get dressed. She, um, they all kissed her because my daughter was really loved. She was like <laughs> the baby of the hood. Like she mm -hmm. was the hood baby for real. So yeah. everybody loved her. So they were kissing her and, oh, bye, you know, um, I'll see you later, Nani. I forgot. I didn't because we were rushing out. Mm -hmm. So I didn't. So that's what made me act. Like, when I went upstairs to get my mother's card, I was like, oh, shit, let me kiss her before we left. But he was on some, no, 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 she's going to wake up. Like, um, she's going to wake up, you know, you know how she is. All my, my kids are mama's babies, so you know how she is. Then you can't go nowhere. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. I got the family downstairs. Let me just rush down. When he said that, do you think that he had already... Looking back at it, um... From now, yes, but like right then and there, I had no clue. Well, I mean, I felt, what I will say is, I felt something a little bit because he was telling my neighbor, um, he's a DJ, he was coming up with his equipment, so he heard us in the hallway, e cash or whatever, and he um, was like, oh, I'm gonna come down the hallway, and I'm like, how are you gonna go down the hallway? And you still got my daughter here, you know? He's like, oh, I'm talking about when Jerry comes, that's my mom's mm -hmm. ex-husband who's right. now passed. And um, he popped in the hallway like so fast, you know, like, oh, like, you know, like a child that's doing something and they like hear their mother come in. So they right, right, right. You just skirted And I'm real like, quick. what's wrong with you? Like, what? So once he was like, no, I'm talking about he, you know, when Jerry come, I'm like, OK, let's just go in the house. So but I did like it was kind of weird, but not I, I just would not think he would do nothing like that. So. OK. When you come back home. Yes. What happens? How do you find out? Was it a call? Was it, did you come to the house? How did you? So at the at the spot, we we get to the spot already. Um, we for like an hour, we dance and enjoy ourselves. Me and my friends. My mom is over there conversing, mm -hmm. with the dreadheads or whatever, mm -hmm. and um, she's conversing with them. And um, what had happened that day? But if I don't remember. Oh, he texts me. Like, mm -hmm. does my daughter sleep with her eyes open? Now, I sleep with my eyes. We all, all family sleep with a little bit. I open, shut. So I'm like, yeah, she's fine. Why? What? He's like, oh, no, she's breathing or whatever the case may be. But I call him. And I'm like, you know, what's going on? He's like, oh, no, she's breathing, stupid. Like, you know, yeah. I'm like, okay. Well, I'm about to come home because now I'm feeling something yeah, crazy. It's like, what? like, well, I'm about to come home because you talking about you throwing up. That's another thing. He said, oh, I'm throwing up. And I'm like, you throwing up. You talk about it. Does my daughter see my house over? She look a little sick. I'm coming home. That's when he's calling me now. It's, no, it's like I hung up, but now he's, call, he, he's calling me. I'm trying to call him. Our lines are crossing. When I put my phone down to try to call again because our lines were crossed, that's when I saw, call me, Nani's not breathing. And I was like, what? What? What did, what did you feel at that exact moment? If you could I remember. froze. I remember me freezing, looking at my phone like, what? And I just ran inside, ran past my friends. I told my mother first. She was talking. I told my mother first. She came. And then I told my friends, we just jetted. Like, to this day, we probably done left shoes, money, everything, because we just jetted. She's on the phone telling him, go knock on the next door neighbor's door. Mm -hmm. She's a nurse. Um, he did not do that. He, what he did was, um, I called 911 from we where were. we was at, Jerome Avenue. I'm the one that called 911. Now, my mom's husband is there, and he didn't know anything until ambulance started being boop, 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 unresponsive baby. What? He's like, and this is the gentleman that passed already? Yes, Jerry, yes. Okay. So you, you, you get to the house or you go straight to the hospital? I get out the elevator, but I pop back in the elevator because my best friend is like, go back downstairs. Like, she's on her way down and already they already took her down. So I didn't even get to see his face, nothing. Like, the last time I saw his face was that time when I went back upstairs. Like, I pop back in and I just hop back in the, the you know, the ambulance truck all the way to the Jacoby. Yeah. So your friend was telling you to not 
go into the room to just go into the ambulance to go straight to the hospital. To the hospital, yes. Do you see your daughter while you're in the ambulance? Yes. I'm, I'm, my mom got in, you know, two came. My mom got in the one that well, didn't have nobody, but lo and behold, I got into the one where my daughter was in. Okay. What was the look on her face? Did you feel like she was already gone or did you feel like there was hope? At that point in time, I, I felt like it was hope in there because they were, you know, at, what I do remember is me looking back, like kept looking back, like seeing them, you know, pumping her chest, whatever, trying to revive her. That's all I've seen. But in my head, deep down inside, because my godmother, she's a pastor. So I'm always praying, God, family, praying, like, oh yeah. my God, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. And I, I was just praying, like, oh, I pray, you know, this is not, this is not it. Like, I just pray when we get there, you know, they say, you know, they took care of her and she's fine. Okay. You get to the hospital. Yes. And you find out she's not okay. Talk to me about that moment. Um, so what I can remember is them and Jacoby just, you know, pumping her, like I said, we... We go in the waiting area, what they call it, a grievance room. Mm -hmm. I don't see her no more. So when the nurse come back in, she's saying, um, you know how they come in, they tell you, oh, we did A, B, and C, yep. we did everything. I still had hope at that of course. time. You're still not thinking of Her last words, um, I was hoping she was saying, when she said and, I'm like, okay, and we like, what, Good and what? Like, okay, we could go upstairs. That's what I'm thinking, like, we about to go upstairs to go see her. She's like, and she didn't make it. And I just heard my grandmother screaming me. I threw up all black stuff. I don't know what it was. I just threw up all black stuff. Just was throwing up. I couldn't believe it. Like, I couldn't really believe it. Like, I could not believe it. Like, I was just like, what? So I start, I called him because now they take me to go identify her body there. So I go in, it's a bunch of red dots all over her body, all over her stomach. Me, I don't know, you know, she was very light skinned. So I'm like, she breaks out. Me, I, I think I'm still in denial, you know, now that I look mm. back. Cause I'm like, oh no, that been there, she breaks out. Like, I don't, he didn't do it, like nothing. I don't know what is that, you know? And then, but I also called him like, what the hell is going on? Why? He didn't even come? No, he didn't come because I believe um, the police was holding him because he tried to blame it on my mother's boyfriend. My mother's boyfriend, he was a quiet dreadhead. The whole hood knew him. Nobody right. messed with him right. or whatever because he was quiet. So he tried to blame it on him, though, and say, oh, it was him. And then he tried to say, they found my daughter. My daughter's face was in a leather couch. All my kids are bright as hell. Like, right. I'm like, my daughter didn't do that. Any kid would know. You know, if you cannot breathe, if you suffer, you move your head. That's any human. So I was like, that 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 couldn't be so. Even the cops knew it was bullshit, the detective. So they kept him there. He couldn't go nowhere anyway. They kept him at the house. Yes. It was now a, a crime scene there. <sighs> okay. Th those 24 hours, what is your mental state? How are you? What ha What's happening? What's going on? If you could remember. Um, my mental state was on froze. I'm not going to even lie to you. Like, I was on froze. I just couldn't understand what the hell was going on. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel real with me. I, I, I just felt like maybe she, she's at her father's house. Maybe her father or her grandmother took her, her great-grandmother or something. Like, those 24 hours was crazy. I was under the first 48. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. I, I was under the first 48. Wow. And also him, too, but... Because, you know, that was my partner. They wanted to make sure it wasn't no funny business. Wow. or But I was under the first 48, all my friends, everybody came. You know, wow. I'm, you know, I'm known, I'm well known. So everybody came out to support because everybody knew I wouldn't do nothing like that. Like, wow. So, yeah, my mental state was off those first 24 hours. How long ago was this? This was in... 2010, so I want to say she would have been 15, so. 15. She would have been 15, so I'm trying to think. I think it was about, what, 14? You see, like, it's not like I'm, I forget it, but it's like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, me, I don't say I don't have no emotion after that, but it's kind of like that. Like, 
So I don't forget the years, but I just be off because it's just like, I got to remember how old she was, how long ago, and I really don't want to remember that. It's like sometimes our mind just tries to protect us and block out Very much so, things that, so that we yeah. don't have to live with that trauma yeah. over and over. Do you ever like have dreams about her or how old she would have been or like see her in an older state or, or still see her as a baby? Is, she's never came to me in my dream. Wow. But I do like have thoughts like sometimes like, you know, like I have um, my, my cousin, um, we are close. We more like sisters, mm -hmm. Aisha. She has her kids, her two kids. They were born, um, all around the same time. Mm -hmm. So my daughter would have been 15, my little cousin just turned 16, and my other little cousin just turned 17. So when I see them, mm -hmm. I get very emotional because they were they were close. I have a picture of them all three in the stroller looking bad as hell <laughs> at like three, four years old. Yeah. And they always post her, you know, so they also remind me to, like they, they always post her and wow. I look at them and I just get, you know, emotional. So I don't dream about her, but Certain yeah. things like that, I see little kids, yeah, yeah, you know, of course. like that. Okay, yeah. so let's go back to this man. When do they realize that this is blunt force trauma to the body that your baby was beaten to death? Um, while we was under the first 48, he were, we were waiting for um, an autopsy. Mm -hmm. So I would say in like 72 hours maybe, Oh, uh, yeah, no, 48 hours, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That's when they found out because a detective came to me. He gave me a speech I'll never forget, and he said, you know, I know you lost your daughter, but today it might be like you're losing two people because if that thing comes back and says A, B, and C, he's going to go to jail for life. And I just broke down crying because it's like, I, I had my mom, of course, and but she had her, you know, she was already going through it, too. So I didn't have nobody to, like, really, you know, I had my friends, but they have their own life. Did you have any more kids at the time? No. So this was your It was my morning. first daughter. Oh, my goodness. My first, my very first child, and I had her at um, 17. 17 years old. My mom had me 11 days before her birthday, and I had my daughter 11 days after. So okay. their birthday is on the same day. Okay. Um, how much time does he get? Does he get time? Does he go to jail? What, what, what happened? He, we went to court for about like a year or two. He was, the sentence he got was 18 years plus five years supervision. Now, when I look it up, it says that um, 20 and 2020, what? It was 2023, 2020, either next year or the year after he can go up for parole. We're not going to let that happen. I'm not going to let that happen. But he can go up for parole, and then if he does, you know, he gets set free. And then I think he's, like, um, on parole for the rest of the years, plus the five <clears throat> that they said he had to do right. if he does the full 18. Right. He still has five years to be on parole. Was there ever a conversation? Did you ever speak to him again? Did you ever hear from him again? Did he ever write you? Was there an apology? Was there an admission of guilt? Nope. Nothing. Nope. Nothing at all. It was just, this is the last time I see or hear from this person. And realistically, this we're talking about he's up for parole in a year. Mm -hmm. This man could be home. Yes. That's one of the things I, you know, that's one of the things I think about, too. Like, you know, what, what, what if this, you know, what if this nigga could come home, you know, like, What's going to happen? Because I, I, I know I'm not, I can, you know, I can control myself, but it's, it's going to be hard. You know, suppose I see him in the street. He can't go nowhere, you know, because he's under five years supervision right. if he's on parole. So it's like I'm bound to see him in the street. But like I said, I'm, you know, I'm well known. So right. this might be an odd question, but did you ever miss him? Because this guy, you were in a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. You guys, you, you were dating. This was somebody that you were intimate with. Right. Did, or did your relationship with him go cold turkey, cut off? I don't give a fuck about him no more. I would say um, both. But what I will say is, like, I never were you the first one I shared this with. But I've never, um, in the beginning, yes. I was like, damn. Like, I was, I couldn't get, you know, register. Like, he would really do that. You know, he, 
he took care of her like his bed. I even he was even bathing her. Wow. So, yeah. So I was just like, at, at first for a while, yeah, I was like, damn, like, Ain't damn, I miss him. I don't yeah. even got nobody to yeah. console me or right, nothing right. right now because he gone. But then after a while, you know, it drifted away. Mm -hmm. I had a tattoo right here mm -hmm. of his name, and it's so crazy. I got it a month before he killed my daughter. And the tattoo guy said, it was just a drunk thing. He's like, oh, they got a new tattoo parlor up the block. Let's go and, you know, get a tattoo. I got his name, the tattoo guy says to me, most people, not, you know, thinking that, but he was like, you'll be back in a month. The people will always get it changed. You know, people go through things. They always get right, things. Right. And you were young. You were 17 I was, years yeah, old. So. And I got his name and I got a cover. And so once I got that covered, because, um, you know, going through things, you know, girls are catty, females are catty, that, they always brought that up. Oh, you still got a nigga name on your wow. chest who killed your daughter. Wow. So then I'm finally like, you know what, I'm about to get this covered because wow. I don't really got time for it. But yeah, so after a while, it drifted away. How old was he? He At that time, he was 23. So I was 17. Oh, no, I was like, yeah, at that time when he killed my daughter, I was 18 or going on 18 and he was 23. So he was dealing with you as a minor? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, do you ever blame yourself? Sometimes. Sometimes I think about it and I just be like, you know, as a mother, you just be like, damn, how could I, how did I not see anything? You know, like, how did I not? see really see the red flags or whatever or was there any so yeah sometimes uh i used to but you know i'm stronger than ever now you know i don't let that get to me so so many you know people have blamed me already like mm. you know and said things mm -hmm. you know females like i said females are catty mm -hmm. family members mm. said oh you know oh, that nice. Things like, well, at least this one got their kid. You know, it was wow. mean wow. things. Wow. I told my mom you should have been in the grave with your granddaughter. Wow. So, you know, now I'm stronger than ever. You can't really get to me with that. But before, yeah, I used to like really believe what people were saying. Do you forgive him? No. And I know I'm a God fearing person, you know. My, my godmother, she probably would be like, you know, you know what I tell you about God and forgiveness, but no. And I believe that that's why maybe I have, like, I have trouble with, like, relationships and men. Like, me with men, I'm the one, I'm, I'm a dog, you, I, I talk to you any kind of way, you know, like, you know, just like that. To this day. Hmm? To this, this, this day, yes. I have issues in relationships. Like, they, they don't last long because I'm either, you know, you basically you can't tell me what to do. And then also, too, you know, I, I feel like I don't care if you leave or stay because mm. I'll be telling niggas, like, yo, nigga, I lost my daughter. Mm. Like, you think I give, uh, care if you're going today? And that's really me. Like, if I, if I talk to you and we stop talking today, a friendship, anything, it's like, okay. Hey, they, you will not hear from me. They, they will have to hit me up for because I, it's like, I already, like, what, it's not, I always tell a guy, you can't hurt me no more than that nigga did because wow. he took my baby. So it's like, yeah. How do you feel about stepfathers? As, How do I feel about stepfathers? Yeah, in stepfather situations where guys come in and, and, you know, watch. Because I remember when back when I was dating, I never met women's children. Right. Right. And I also made sure that if a woman had a child, right. I wouldn't get too close to her mm -hmm. because I didn't have children yet. So I knew that I didn't want to ha start a family with someone who already started a family. Right. Right. So that's why I asked you, what do you feel? What is your stance on sort of the stepfather situation, introducing somebody to your kids and, you know, things of that nature? That's something, too, I have an issue with like um how i feel about that is you know i think it's a beautiful thing when you can find a man that loves you and your kids 
genuinely though, daily. Um, but for me, it's, it's hard because I'm always thinking somebody's doing something to my kid because of that. Mm. Family members, anything. Mm. I'm always thinking the worst for mm. my kids. That's why they, both of them have phones, the three-year-old and the nine-year-old. The three-year-old got a phone that I could call on. My nine-year-old got a phone because I'm just, my son gets mad with me because I'll be like, come here, any, anybody touch you? Mm. Anybody? Down there, and he, nobody touched you, right? right? And he'd be like, no, mom, stop asking me that. Because wow. That's how I am. But I think it's a beautiful thing if you can find a real man to love the kids. And, yeah. But like, what advice would you give to another young woman that is dating another guy that is being introduced to somebody um, that's introducing somebody to that kid? Like, what, what kind of advice would you give? Because it was like no real warning signs for you. It really wasn't, no. Like, so what do you watch out for? Did he, this guy have a history, a violent past? Was he in the streets? There has to be. His mom was, um, she was, you know, she was like you know, a crackhead. So he had a, a hard life as well growing up. Mm. What I heard was he was, you know, a little offish, like mm -hmm. back in the day when he was little, because I know people who knew him, but he didn't give me none of that. And, and I met him through his cousin, his cousin, she did, but I thought she was playing with something like, oh, he's crazy. And I'm like, girl, whatever. But what the advice I would give, you know, to other females and younger females is, you know, just always look out for how your kid, even if they little and they babies, babies always are going to show. Kids are always going to show some type of action of, you know, somebody's being mean to them or anything. So I would say always, you know, just pay attention to your kid when your kid is around them. What do you think has hurt you most about this whole ordeal? Um, because we know losing a child, that's top. Right. But in this whole process, maybe it be the process and afterwards or the aftercare or maybe people being there for you, not being there for you, or just what do you feel like has hurt you most about this whole ordeal? I feel like what hurt me most of course, it's losing my child, you know that. But what really hurt me the most is that somebody that we took in, my mom, all that, like, I let you around my kid, trusted you, that you would really do something like that, you know, take my daughter's life. Also, what hurt me the most is that I can't go on, you know, like, I'm good. Like, when I meet people, they say, oh, you're so strong, but they don't really know behind closed doors what I go through, you know? So that's what hurt me the most is, like, my life changed. I just will never be the same again. You know, I'm, I'm, I've always been, you know, like a rough type, but now I feel like more, I'm more rowdy, more angry. I'm ready. Wow. I'm ready to go. Whatever. What you said, oh, especially over my kids. Like wow. I'm very overprotective of my kids. And so that's what hurt me the most. I just feel like I can't live life right because I'm always have that on my, my head and my mind. And that's what really hurts me the most. What do you want to come from your story? What I want to come from this story is, um, you know, young girls, girls period, because after that happened to me, it was just like an ongoing thing. And I, even up until last year, I hear so many stories about, you know, these females leaving their kids with the guys. What I, I want the girls to know, like, it's okay, you know, if, if you need a babysitter or anything for a job interview or anything, it's okay to miss that job interview. Or if you like, you know, or to go out, it's okay to miss the club or mm. whatever. Okay, mm. it, it, it's okay to not have a night out with your friends. Stay home with your kids, mm. especially if you feel like something. You know, if you feel funny, and don't ever be like, you know, you might see something and then you ignore it. Like basically ignore it. Like do not ignore that, especially with your kid. And just, you know, I just want them to pay attention to your kids more. That's it. Not saying I didn't, but I should have, like, a little more. You know, I was young, though. I was young. My mom helped me a lot. I had a lot of help back then. So, you know, I was free to go outside or whatever because I lived with my mom. I was a teenager. You know, I'll leave the baby here. Go ahead. Go about your business. So it's okay to, you feel me, stay with your kids. Build a bond with your kids. Don't. Don't, you know, and don't introduce your kids so fast. That's mm. what I would say to a guy. Wait, wait like a year mm. or so sometimes, you know, like my kids, sometimes I have company, you know, I'm single, but when I have company, mm. some of the guys be like, you got kids. Wow. You say you got kids, you got kids wow. because you don't, you don't see my kids. 
Why, um, mm. how long before you feel like you were able to party again or go out again or hang with your friends again or, you know, do you think um, after that situation or even date again? Well, for party again, it was a little minute, I would mm -hmm. say. It was a little minute. Mm -hmm. It was like I would only do things like go meet up with my friends. We mm -hmm. go to the house. I sing sometimes, so they had me mm -hmm. singing. We do karaoke, mm -hmm. things like that. It, it was it was a minute. Now mm -hmm. I I don't I can't remember when I really got back in the club scene. Oh, one of my um my my old best friends, well my best friend now, Jasmine. She was like, oh let's go out one day, and I'm like. Sure, I'm bored. I didn't have right, any kids right. anymore. I'm like, all right, come on. And we went to some place called Ebony Lounge. And mm -hmm. after that, I just started going out. Like, yeah, let's go again. Let's yeah, go yeah, out now more. Let's go out more. Yeah, now I'm, yeah. I'm like, let's go more. Then that's how that's how it started. But I will say, sometimes when I get to clubs, if I'm not, you know, drinking enough, I still get that feeling sometimes. Like, I want to go home. Like, you know, and, I'm not feeling it. And it's Chris Styles, Trapping Anonymous. Let's get it.